Hello, everyone. I am absolutely delighted to welcome Lynn Tranchell today. And uh, Lynn is going to share her journey and her process with us. Lynn, thank you so much for agreeing to join us today and to be able to spend time with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is great. Awesome, awesome. Now, ladies and gentlemen, go and look Lynn up. All of her information is going to be in the show notes because I love what she says on her LinkedIn banner. Dream bravely, act boldly, and live vibrantly. How does it get any better than that? Lynn, please share with us who you are, what you do, and where this beautiful three-step pattern came from. Yeah, so I am in Buffalo, New York. I have been doing this for, I've been coaching for, since 2010, I got my first coaching certification. Before that, I was in technology. I have a bachelor's in psychology, a master's in computer science. My master's project is in artificial intelligence, though, and my favorite class in when I got my degree in psychology was physiological psychology, which is brain, which is all brain stuff. So I love the brain. I love the way the brain works. And I love being able to help people shift their paradigms, their thought habits, their whatever is going on in their brain to support where they want to be. And that's how I came up with my slogan, dream bravely, act boldly, live vibrantly, because that's that is really what it's all about. It's living vibrantly in your business and in your life. It's creating full spectrum wealth so that you're rich and abundant in every area of your life. Wow, I love that. Rich and abundant in every area of your life. People, now you understand why I invited Lynn onto the Mindset Alchemy podcast. Lynn, where does mindset fit in with all of this for you? Where have you, what, what is the primary thing you see in your clients? The primary see, thing I see is the thought habits, or I like, I call them paradigms. I, I For people that don't know what paradigm is, I say thought habit, because people understand thoughts, they understand habits. But before the age of seven, let's back up a little. Your Your mind is divided into two pieces, your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is your thinking mind, your subconscious mind is your emotional mind. And so everything that uh, your subconscious mind cannot accept or reject, it just goes in there. So before the age of seven, your conscious mind didn't exist. So think about everything you saw, heard, experienced, went right into your subconscious without a filter. And that's why we say that we inherit our parents' beliefs, their parents' beliefs, their parents' beliefs, because that goes in without a filter. Mm -hmm. So whatever you experience then is mm -hmm. just sitting there as your underlying program, mm -hmm. your thought habits, your paradigms, and that really dictates your mindset. So based mm -hmm. on your underlying paradigms, you have a different, you, you're, you have a mindset. So that is, the, there's good news and bad news. So the good news is it's not your fault. Yes. The bad news is it's your responsibility. Oh, I love that. So, so just like you, I help people with their mindset. I just say thought habits to make it easier for people to understand. Mm -hmm. But that's to me, that's where paradigms and thought and mindset coincide. Yes. Um, yes. They go with, go with each other. Absolutely. I agree with you. I love that thought habits because as we all know, habits can be replaced or layered over. I don't believe, I dislike the term breaking habits because they're always mm -hmm. there. They, because of that imprinting, they're always there. What is your feeling around that? Do you feel a habit can ever be replaced or? Oh, what? definitely. In fact, we've proven this. If you look, if you looked at Joe Dispenza at all, neuroplasticity mm -hmm. proves that you can change your thought habits. You actually, when you go through that process, you change the wiring in your brain. Joe Dispenza says thoughts that fire together, wire together. So if you can go through and consistently change those thought habits mm -hmm. to thought habits that 
create where you want to go, then that changes in your brain and it's easier after you get to that place. Easier, just it takes time to get there. I was, um, hmm, exactly because I'm fascinated, right? I actually had a little bit of a tussle with somebody the one day because they said, no, it's 21 days to shift a habit. And I said, it's 21 days to get used to it. It's actually 180 plus days to actually layer it and stack it. And then I thought to myself, it actually doesn't matter. So long as you're aware of it and you can move forward. When you work with clients, what is the number one habit you see coming forward all the time that keeps people either in pain, emotional pain, or stuck in a loop of disempowerment? Yeah, a lot. Uh, actually, I'm working a lot with entrepreneurs now, and a lot of entrepreneurs have one of the three syndromes that I call either the imposter syndrome or the um, Lone Ranger syndrome, or the <laughs> I know that syndrome. Yeah. So the imposter syndrome is they say, I, I I don't know how to do this. I'm not good at this. I'm not, but they wouldn't be there if they weren't. So they have these, these little chatter in their voice and their mind, and that keeps them from moving forward. Or the Lone Ranger syndrome is I have to do it myself. Mm. When in reality, if you try to do everything you can't do everything. If you try to do everything, you do everything, um, not necessarily poorly, but not to your best. Mm -hmm. And then the I know that syndrome, they say, I know that and just dismiss it. And then they don't see the blessing or see the things that they could learn from that. So those are just three things that I run into. That's very powerful. That I know that syndrome is, uh, in fact, all of them come from trauma. All of them come from misunderstanding. When you work with your clients, um, do you help them see their traumas? How do you help them see their traumas? Especially because you come from a background of quite logical and yet very, very creative ways of working. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't have them focus on their trauma. What I have them do I have a, a three-step process in everything. The first step is your vision. Uh, without a vision, the people will perish. So you have to have a vision based on what would I love? Not what do I think I can do, not my conditions. But when you go into that place, that vibration of what would I love, you see things differently. So then once they have that vision, that's the second step is their thought habits. And then reframing those thought habits to support where they want to be. I like to say, be it until you see it. So if you can step into that vibration of being that person, you see things different. And then from there, you have to act. So the third step is to act. And that action is like the ground wire to electricity. Without a ground wire, electricity doesn't work. So without grounding that um, paradigm, that thought habit, reframe with action to support it, that nothing happens. So that's it's in the the reframing and the action mm -hmm. that over time people change the way they think about things and the way they see things. That is awesome. I love that because one of the fourth step of the mindset alchemy program is be effortlessly. And uh I so many times speak to people, they have the vision, they have their vision board, and they don't apply any action. And then mm, they say to me, but nothing's happening. Well, what are you creating to happen? So, where have you found people resist creating a vision because they fear it? I know you mentioned the three steps. I, I do know there's also the self-saboteur that fits into that imposter syndrome. Where do you find people resist the most? What is their fear around achieving success? Um, a, a lot of people have lost the connection with their um, kind of their inner child, their dream, their ability to dream. They say, I'm too old. I can't do it now. That's just the way it is. When in reality, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. So it's really allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to ask the question, what would I love? And that's a a step that a lot of people have. And then the next step is they 
feel as though they have to know exactly how to do it Mm. before they can start. When, if you know how to do it, then it's really not a vision. It's a worthy goal. So in order to have a vision big enough for the real you, it has to be something that you have no idea how to get there. And then you just start taking action and the next step appears. Yes, I have definitely seen that. And somebody says, yeah, but I want to see it all. And I go, well, then you're not going to have it. It's that small step at a time. I saw you have been on a um, summit, the art and science of transformation. What yeah. does that look like for you? Um, it's it's just using those three steps and really, because transformation is about changing from one state to another. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's changing from one uh, series of thought habits or mindset or paradigms to one that supports you and where you want to go. So as long as you can, uh, I have a, a method I call the AIR method, A-I-R-R. And the first step is just awareness. You just have to, you have to notice. So if you're not getting the results you want, the results, it goes from your thoughts, create your feelings, create your actions, which creates your results. If you're not getting the act results you want, you look at your thoughts. Mm-hmm. So just awareness. Mm-hmm. And then you want to interrupt that thought. You want to say up until now, or a part of me believes this. And that kind of tricks your subconscious into not trying to keep you from the next step. And then you just release it. Let it go. Let it go. Picture, you could picture it floating away like a cloud. And then the the fourth step is to replace it. So anytime you create a void, the universe tries to fill it. And if you don't fill it with what you want, it will fill with that old thought. So you replace it with a more empowering thought. That is so powerful. I um, use something called the saw technique, which I love how you've explained it is see it, observe it. Is it mine? Is it somebody else's? Is it helping me? Is it getting in my way? Acknowledge it because so many people, I won't think about it. And they push this down and, oh my goodness, it's going to explode (laughs) at some point. And then uh, recognize it, release it and replace it. I have seen the mess that happens when people release things and forget to replace them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Have you experienced that in your uh, practice? Where they Um, mess up and then they go, what's happening here? Well, part of it is that um, I like to tell people when they feel as though, um, when they hear that voice from their subconscious, that's a good sign. Because your subconscious is telling you, um, you know, that your subconscious sole purpose is to keep you safe. Yes. So when you try to do something you've never done before, your subconscious knows doesn't know what the outcome is going to be. Mm-hmm. So it tries to keep you safe and it creates this something or other. And I always say that's the good news. It's good news when that happens, because if you weren't changing, your subconscious would be silent. Mm-hmm. So the fact that you're hearing something, you're you're hearing this voice of doubt. It means you're moving forward. And just knowing that helps people a lot. That's what I tell people all the time. This is what's going to happen next. As soon as you take start taking action towards your vision, you're going to hear that voice. And it's a good sign. So, so say thank you. And, the, and just don't let it stay inside of you and keep you from moving forward. Love that. That is so powerful. Just say thank you. Yes, that is awesome. Where did you start with your mindset journey? Um, Well, it was a number of years ago and my mother was dying of cancer and I had just ended a significant relationship and I was feeling lost and heartbroken. So I went out searching for for um, something to help me. I was like a sponge that wanted to absorb everything. And I actually attended a unity church. Um, And I started taking classes and I started teaching classes. And I really loved it when the light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. So I went out looking for uh, a coaching certification so that I could help other people 
do what I did and have that light bulb go off and see things differently and start doing things differently. That is beautiful. Um, well, not beautiful about your mom. It's wonderful that you started finding the significance and of moving towards where you were choosing to go. What is the number one thing that you like your clients to understand apart from awareness? Because that is the number one thing for me anyway. What is, apart from that, what would the number one thing be that you help your clients understand? Um, I think that the number one thing is just to keep in the question, what would I love? And then always action. Action is... Uh, like I said, it's like the ground wire. If you don't take action, nothing happens. Uh-huh. So being willing to be open to to change and see things differently and then do things differently. Yes, and people are terrified of different and of change. Oh. How do you help them move beyond that fear? Um, I think it's just in the doing. Every time you do it, you get more comfortable And just know that do it afraid to begin with. Just step out, do it afraid, and know that it will get easier and easier each time you do it, and you'll become more comfortable. I like to show this picture. I have a picture of this like um, guru type person laying on a bed, bed of nails. You have to be comfortable in the discomfort long enough for it to be comfortable again. And then you take that next step and you become uncomfortable again so it's just a a process of staying comfortable in the discomfort as you move forward I love that and that that visual of the bed of nails yes that is beautiful Um, I've heard it in a different way from somebody down south in the south of America the USA they were saying um, they're sitting on the porch and their friend's dog was going whoa do you say what's wrong is the dog okay I'm sure you've heard this story and he said he's lying on a nail and he said well should we move it he said no when he gets uncomfortable enough you'll move so it's like when you're uncomfortable enough you'll move and get comfortable with it I also see it as when you're going down that roller coaster and your stomach stays behind when you know you're losing Mm. your stomach you're on a good record although I like roller coasters I must say It's taken me a lot of time to get used to them. How did you feel transitioning from um, AI into the coaching and into helping people create more in their life? Yeah, well, I like to say that when I was doing computer programming, I was doing something very similar because I would talk to people and help them uh, decide what would make their work life easier. Mm -hmm. And then I would write a program to do that. So in the past, when I was writing a program to help people make their work life easier, now I'm giving people the steps to, to create the life that they love. So it's just a different outcome. In the past, I was delivering a computer program, and now I'm helping individuals step into being that person. So the process is the same. The outcome is a little bit different. That's all. I had an analogy there when you were speaking of you were working with a computer program. Now you're helping people to actually reset their programming. Yes. That is just so awesome. Yeah. I like to say um, they're creating a new internal operating system. Oh, that's beautiful. It's so true. It's so true. You were talking about Dr. Joe Dispenza. I really enjoy his work. And you were talking about the neuroplasticity. I have seen that people's emotions imprint on their cells and shift and change it. What are your feelings around uh, emotions and the way they redirect our cellular structure or us functioning more than structure? Yeah, yeah, it, it is a definitely your emotions because remember your subconscious is your emotional mind. So your emotions do dictate how you see things. And I also like uh, David Hawkins' uh, map of consciousness. Yes. Where each of the emotions have a frequency, a vibration. So when you're in fear and doubt, those are low vibrations. Mm. But love and joy are high vibrations. So when you can notice your emotions 
and shift those from the low vibration to the high vibration, you're in a completely different place and you see things differently and you attract things differently. Mm -hmm. Um, The law of attraction, probably everybody that listens to your podcast would know the law of attraction. The law of attraction is actually the secondary law. The law of vibration is primary. So if you want to get the law of attraction to work faster, you get into that vibration. And that's why I always like to say, be it until you see it. When you're in that vibration of your vision, then you can attract what you want a lot faster. Absolutely. And then I love throwing in the law of paradoxical intent and the law of create, because what you're talking about is the law of uh, creation being the law of attraction as well, where that fear is there. And if the fear is heavier than the focus of where your your dream, that vision, what you're talking about, you're going to manifest that uh, fear rather than the focus. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, Have you ever experienced where people say, the law of attraction doesn't work? And I go, let's explore this. (laughs) Yeah, you you can't say, this is what I want, and then sit on the couch and eat bonbons. You have to... You have to actually do something. Yes. I'd like, uh, something happened today. I was listening to a um, personal development CD. And I, this young man was asked, where would you like to be in 10 years? What, where do you see yourself in 10 years? And he made a statement. I look at it what will I regret doing today in 10 years? And this really sat heavy with me. And I was working, thinking it through, and I came up with, what would I be grateful I did today in 10 years' time? What is your feeling around the heaviness of one phrase as opposed to the lightness of another one? Oh, I think words are very important. And um, if you look at Dr. Emoto's uh, study of the effect of words on water, the words you use and the words, even the words, that's why I tell people to pay attention to the words they put on themselves. Mm -hmm. Those words have an effect. So by, and it's not, it's not being Pollyannish to be positive. Mm-hmm. Because there is, there's all of these things that having a positive mindset affects you in so many great ways, and the words you use are really important. Is do you really want to create what those words are saying, or do you want to change those to create what you want? And I, I love your shift in what am I doing today that I would appreciate in the future. Um, and that's another thing that I have people do is to step into the future mm-hmm. and um, and ask, what can I do today to get there? So it's kind of like future memory. You step into, into being that person, and then you'll take different steps from being that person. Absolutely. I um, Have you worked with the Be Do Have scenario? What would mm-hmm. I like to have? What do I do to receive it? And who do I choose to be now to do it, to have it? And Exactly. Uh, yeah, some people resist that. <laughs> like, you mean I've got to feel wealthy now? Yes. You mean I have to feel healed now? What do I do with this pain? Well, let's chat about it. Lynn, what else would you like the audience to know around, I love it, dream bravely, act boldly, and live vibrantly? I just love that. Yeah, well, I have um, I have a meditation called How to Be a Success Magnet that can help you move into that vibration of success so that you're at those higher level vibrations and it's just a five minute a five minute meditation that you can use, and there's a workbook that goes with it, so that any time you're feeling a little bit off, you can step into those memories of those successes and shift your vibration to to be um, a success vibration and then a success magnet. 
I love that. Especially I saw that you were talking about success on your LinkedIn profile as well. People don't hesitate. Please make sure in the show notes, the links will be in the show notes, uh, both on the podcast and YouTube. Make sure you get that meditation. It will really help. Um, It is a catalyst to alchemize that mindset from a lower vibration to a higher vibration. So let's tap in, tune in and use it because Lynn is very generously offering it to us as a gift. Lynn, thank you so much for being here. What do you, what is one final thing you would like to share with the audience today? Um, Just to always be asking yourself, what would I love? And when the circumstances come up, just know that they're just circumstances um, and what you would love is still there. And if you can dream it, you can achieve it. So stay in the place of uh, your vision and what would I love and take a step every single day to get there. Beautiful, Lynn. I so appreciate you giving us your time today, gifting us with your time, your expertise, and your wisdom today. And I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> I definitely, I actually, I love your process. I could carry on talking for hours and don't want to keep you here. People, thank you so much for joining us. Remember to get Lynn's meditation. That's in the show notes. And, uh, Sharing is caring. Please leave us a five-star review. Make sure you look up Lynn and uh, share the podcast so that others can dream bravely, act boldly, and live vibrantly. Thank you, Lynn, and thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.